Hey, what's up? My name is Josh, and today I want to show you guys my watch collection. As a kid, I have a distinct memory of wearing this blue watch with a bezel that you can twist, and I always found that super fascinating. It had a NATO strap as well, and I wore it quite frequently until this one time I was wearing it, I smashed it into a wall, and the whole face just broke into a million pieces. Since then, I did take a little bit of a break. Uh, it wasn't until just a few years ago where I got back into watches. The first watch that kicked the watch journey off again was this Casio Quartz watch, which I picked up from Japan. It cost, I think, under $10. And the story around it was, I wanted a watch that I could wear like this on the bottom of my wrist, because I heard that in the army, a lot of soldiers wear their watch on this end to see the time as they're holding their gun and not that I hold guns or anything but I do hold cameras every now and then so having a watch like this actually kind of made sense as I can see the time and this watch was cool because it is lightweight so you don't have to wear it on the top or the bottom kind of wearing it both ways doesn't really make much of a difference I do find wearing it like this it does get scratched a little bit more as I put it down so I don't really do it with any of my other watches, mainly just this one because it is a little bit on the cheaper end. Moving on, this is my chunky fossil watch. It is a quartz watch, but also has a mechanical element to it with these seconds that actually spin. I thought that was super, super cool. I actually bought this straight after watching the movie Tomorrowland with George Clooney, with my sister. We're kind of walking around the shops after the movie and I went into fossil and thought this looked very, iconic of that movie and so I was really drawn to it. I also like the mechanical element of it so I ended up picking it up and I took a photo of it and posted it on Instagram and that actually started uh, an opportunity with Fossil. So I actually got to work with them after taking a photo of this watch. So I really like it. I don't wear it all that often mainly because it is a little bit larger and it is a particular color that I don't really kind of wear with most of my outfits, but nonetheless, I really like this watch, uh, especially all the memories it has. Next up is my G-Shock. And to start the story off with this one, we actually knew a guy that worked at G-Shock, uh, my dad and I, so we both wanted to get watches and we could get them at a discount, fortunately. So I scrubbed through and took quite a long time to pick the one that I wanted. And I ended up picking this one, which has kind of the tide graph as well as the moon faces on it. And I don't even know how to use it, but I, at the time I thought it was a really cool feature uh, as well as this one has a stopwatch, alarm, a few other bits and bobs. And it's just a great watch for swimming, running and working out. I do use it still to this day quite a lot because it's super durable. Moving on to watch number four, this is my Tag Heuer Aqua Racer and it is my everyday watch. It has a quartz movement inside and also has a funny story behind it. I bought this watch with my wife, but at the time we were just starting to date and we finished work. I did want to impress her a little bit, so we walked into Tag Heuer and we were looking at a few watches and then I decided just straight then and there, I'm gonna buy this watch right now. So I did and it has been actually one of the best purchases I think I have bought. Another cool thing about this watch is that it is 300 meters waterproof. So I have taken this diving and it was just really cool to also know what the bezel around the watch does. So essentially what you do is you mark the minute hand with the bezel and so that way you know how much oxygen you have left in your tank because you can look at that marker and then just calculate the time. So I thought that was really cool that I could use that feature down diving as well. All right, moving on to watch number five. This is my Raymond wheel and it actually wasn't originally mine. This was a gift from my mum's dad, so my grandfather, and it was gifted to my dad on his wedding day. So it has now been passed on to me as I just got married and he gifted it to me. And I really like it because it has a bit of history from our family. And yeah, it's such a really nice little dress watch um, to have in the collection. And it's definitely different from all my other pieces. Finishing on another special watch, this is the Bowman Mercier Clifton. 
I really like this watch because it also was a gift from my wife on our wedding day and it also has that date inscripted or engraved on the back here right next to the open back of the watch and it is my first automatic it also has a five day power reserve which is really neat and just all around such a great watch to wear to a dress occasion or just with a really classy outfit or something like this so that pretty much wraps it up. I am really excited to see this collection grow and evolve over time. And also the fact that watches are timeless, I'm excited to maybe pass them on in the future. And all around, now that I am getting a little bit more into watches, I'm starting to see a little bit more of the craftsmanship that goes behind it and the engineering to make these watches a little bit more special, unique, do certain things, which is really, really cool. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.